Uh, there we go. Hello, everyone. So it looks like I'm up and running now. Let me check over here. Uh, there we go. So I can see everybody in the chat right now. Very nice. I know this might be a little bit late for some of you. It might be early. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of trying this out. A little bit of a change. Hi. Hello, everyone. So let's see, who do we have here? We've got Alan, we've got Zen Mama, hello, DB. If there's anything else you want me to call you, let me know. DB in Arizona, Melissa is here, David. I know I already mentioned Alan, let's see. Kerry, Cynthia, if I missed any of you, let me know. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, hello, new year. Lots of new stuff happening. I've been I've been kind of limping around. My foot is still kind of messed up, but you do what you got to do. So I've been kind of looking through my stuff here, <clears throat> and let's see here. I've got my supplies out, so I've got some paints <laughs> from Georgia, Topeka, Kansas. Hello, hello. Yeah, let me know where you're at, so I know. It's kind of interesting finding out it's just where everybody's at. I know some people watch from from pretty much the other side of the world, so it's probably a different time zone for you right now. But yeah, I've got my paints, I've got brushes. I even have a, a couple of new things that just showed up in the mail today. So we are going to be probably taking a look at these today because it's so exciting getting new goodies in the mail. Of course, the package was all soaked because it was raining here today. So, Let's see, what did I get? I got, oh my gosh, it's in Japanese, of course. Who would have thunk it? I got, I think this was a kuretake. So I got one of these pens. You probably know by now, I'm totally obsessed with brush pens. So this is a brush pen. It is not waterproof ink, it is water-based ink. So we'll see how this works. Let's see, this is the, oh, this is the kuretake. So this is a, I think they call it an Inktober kit or something. So it's got three pens. I'm excited about that. Let's see what's in here. So I'm kind of just sharing this stuff with you guys while I see everybody saying hello. We've got James from Texas, Lori from Arizona. Bab says, been working with mixed media lately. Nice, from North Carolina, hello. Hello from North Carolina. Oh my goodness, I love new pens. I know you do too. They're so beautiful. So I think this set comes with like a, a black in a thick nib and then black in a thinner nib and then there's a gray one in here which I'm excited about. I know, excited over a gray pen. So that's gonna be so nice. And they're all hard brush tipped. Uh, when I get a chance, I'll link any of this if any of you wanna look at these, but it's just, I've been excited to try new pens. And then I got this big pack. So it comes with all these things too. So this is from Zig. So this is a Zig. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six. This comes with six pens. I know, isn't it exciting? So much good stuff to try and I just love playing with ink. So this is just so good. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to start back in the beginning. Topeka, Kansas, Georgia, uh, M.O. Oh my gosh. I'm going to sound so uneducated right now. What state is M.O.? Mi no, Miss Missouri. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> let's see here. North Carolina, Iowa, Arizona, Texas, Oregon. Oh, Melissa, thank you. You're so sweet. SoCal. Zen Mama, you're in SoCal with me. Nice. Utah. Uh, didn't hear you say where you got the pens. Oh, I, I, I'm an Amazon shopper. I may not be an Amazon shopper soon. It costs so much to be a Prime member. But uh, yeah, that's, I just shop for all my art supplies on Amazon every day, pretty much. It's, it's easy, especially when I'm homebound like this, when I have uh, issues and I have to stay at home. It's just so easy to shop on Amazon. They send all my junk so fast. So let's see, oh my gosh, what's in this kit? Zig, that's so funny. It says illustration set of three and it's got six pens in it. <laughs> it's funny, 
but I have no idea what, what all this stuff is. I'll find out eventually. I think this is a glitter marker. This is a something I can't read, but it's probably going to be amazing. Mang Mangaka flexible fine point pen. My gosh. I don't think I'll be able to use all these today, but it's just so fun. I've got like this whole this whole set of pens right now that are going to are going to rock my world this week. So that'll be amazing. So that's what I've got. So hopefully all of you guys are getting settled in. I'm going to show you a couple of the supplies and pens and things that I'll be using today. I know I've shown you some of these before, but it's good to always get started if we're going to be playing around today. <clears throat> and I think also it's mostly because uh, I use really cheap stuff most of the time. And Melissa says, yes, please link when you can. Yes, of course I will. And you'll probably see me using these in videos uh, that are coming up in the next few weeks and stuff like that. So that'll be nice. I will always I will always do my best to make sure I link everything. So for today's supplies, I'm using these cheap paints. These are just like kids paints. For me, the key when I like to paint, hello from Las Vegas in Maryland and Nebraska. <laughs> so when I like to paint, I have a tendency to stick to acrylics. So I have played around with uh, gouache and I do love it very much. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are very good at using gouache and watercolors. I'm still a little uncomfortable with it. So I still use gouache and other paint that is acrylic. I like my layers to dry out entirely and to just stay put so that I can layer on top. And so for me, the key is acrylics. So I'm just starting off with some acrylics, cheap kids acrylics. It's fine for me because I'm just playing around. So I've got all these cute little colors, they're pastels. So I'm gonna be using those to begin with. So I'll probably just bust out some brushes in a sec. And then afterwards, I will show you some gouache that is acrylic that I use that comes in these really nice tubes. We're gonna use that. And something else that just showed up today that we might play with is a uh, I think it's called a script liner, a script liner brush. I just got it too. Somebody recommended it to me probably a couple of months ago and it's taken me a while to go and get it. So today I have, it's impossible to open apparently, but I just got it and I'm excited to maybe give it a try today. So it is this brush that has a very, very thin point to it. I haven't opened it yet. This is actually the first time I open it. So it's a little stiff, but it's really nice to see that it's just got this little this little part here. This will be interesting. I've never used these before. I just use uh, just really teeny tiny brushes when I when I paint. So I've got my tea. So let's let's hang out for a little while. And I'm, I'm just kind of curious to see what size group is going to be here today. I think so far there are 31 here with me. Thank you for joining me. And I hope that you're playing along. And if you're not, that's absolutely fine. I, I will admit that I think the reason I do this is because I think I just want to hang out with people. I just want to hang out with you guys. So we're gonna we're gonna paint a little bit. And so if you just give me a second here, let me have a sip here, because my goodness. That is excellent. This is vanilla chai today. So that is that is my my preference for today. So something else that we'll be using, I don't know what you guys like to paint on, but I paint on watercolor paper and I just ordered this stuff. It was discounted heavily and <clears throat> it was raining outside. So the box showed up wet and this is a watercolor paper and uh, I'm annoyed, but I got lucky because most of the paper is still good. So what I'm gonna do is this one that got a little damaged, I'm gonna cut it up and we're gonna play with it today. So let's do that. And how about we switch it up so that we can actually start making stuff right now. So thank you everyone. My gosh, so I'm trying to catch up with the comments a little bit. Very nice, new brush drool. <laughs> yes, love new brushes. It just, it has such a nice feeling before I kind of mess them up with all the paint. So yeah, the, my little, my little mug has a little Christmas tree on it. It's, I, I'm usually not, not big on the, uh, the graphics on mugs. I like all those old mugs, you know, the ones that are at the thrift store and they're just so cute and it looks like somebody loved them. I like those mugs better. I don't like to go to the store. So let's get switched up here. Let's start painting. So I'm going to do that real quick. 
and I think I just need to locate where my thing is for flipping the camera. There we go. <clears throat> and so I kind of just need to set up this thing real quick. It's a bit messy. So you guys are going to see me wobbling for a second while I attempt to organize myself. Okay, I think that should, that should get us close. Okay, where is my view? Technology is, oh, we're on ultra wide, there we go. Technology is interesting. And there we go. So you're probably just looking at a blank paper right now. Let me move that, there we go. <clears throat> For some reason, my allergies just keep bothering me, so I'm sorry. I'm going to be clearing my throat quite a bit. That's just how things go. But yeah, my goodness. It's a new year. It is 2024. <clears throat> and we're going to do lots of new stuff. We're going to do lots of drawing, lots of painting, lots of doodling. So really, I think the first thing that I want to do with this big damaged piece of paper is I'm going to cut it up because this is enormous. This is 12 by 18 paper, but it is watercolor-ish paper. So it can take it can take the mediums. Or correct me if I'm wrong. Sometimes I use the word. It's even cut into right here. Sometimes I use the word and I'm I admit that I may not be as careful as I should be using the right words, but so 12 by 18 cut in half is 9 by 8. Cut in half is 6 by 9. So it looks like we're down to a 6 by 9 right now. And I, I would like to show you some of the work I already did so that you can see kind of what the outcomes are. So this one right here, we'll start with this one. May have to iron the paper to fix it. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, it's, I have done it with a few. I think usually after I work with it with a while, for a while, it all kind of settles down. So, but yeah, there's always a tiny bit of warping. Uh, this is one of the paintings I'm working on right now. I'm close to being done with it. This one is a commission. So I'm being really careful with it, just kind of trying to keep it safe. So it is, there's, there's a, it's got quite, quite nice results, I think. So uh, we're going to be working in layers. Here's another one. We're going to do something similar to this. So I haven't quite gotten to the layers of white on this one yet. So you can kind of see the difference. So that's what's happening. So let's see, what kind of a mess are we going to make here today? I'm going to leave this here for now. I definitely need water. Not a lot of it, actually. But I do need some water. So how can we order a commission from you? I... Right now, people just kind of get a hold of me and then we work it out and I send a PayPal invoice. So if you send me an, an email for now, I've been really bad about it. I should probably set something up on my on my website. That is something that I need I need to do for this year is set up an easier way for people to kind of contact me and set up commissions. But yeah, for now, it's just by way of email. That's what it is. Uh, let's And this one is that it's for the person that I told you is uh, needs artwork for their music for their their CD that's coming out. So that's what this is going to be. It's an album cover. Okay, so we've got water. I'm going to need a bigger brush for this because I'm kind of just going to make a mess. So I think I think this one is okay. This is a flat eight. I'm not sure what the eight means, but you can kind of see the size of it. When I like to lay down the initial bit of paint, I'm kind of like a wild child. So I'm hardly even going to clean my brush. I'm just kind of going to go in like crazy. So I'll show you the, the wild child aspect of the beginning here. I'm just throwing this paint. Again, this is acrylic. Soft pastels. We're going to do this wild child mode. Let me set this aside. Little blue. What else looks cute with blue? This is a, this is a nice little turquoise. Let's see how this looks. Maybe I can just stick to blues for this one. Wild child mode. I am going to change my lights a little because I think they're pointed wrong. Let's see if I can move the light down to where I want it. 
Yeah, any of you who are here today, all of you who are here, looks like 35 have joined me. Very nice. So we are going to add, I think I want one more color, because two is too boring, isn't it? If we're going to use color, let's use color. I'm going to add this pink. Hopefully this looks cute. It probably will. I love doing this because it's like being a little kid. I'm literally using little kid paints. I'm painting like a little kid, making a mess like a little kid, and that's the best. And I'm drinking tea. Okay, so whatever brush I'm using, it, it actually doesn't matter. Sometimes I use the these big wide flat ones that help me kind of stamp straight down. But today I'm just kind of gonna spread this stuff around. And something I may grab too is some, uh, what is this stuff called? Uh, gesso? Gesso? Sometimes I add some of that in here too because it helps kind of thin it out. So I might throw that in here. Even white paint works too. I really like it when these colors are soft. Very, very soft. And I'm probably gonna make a mess on my mat here and that's fine. I don't mind. I think I'm gonna grab that gesso. Eileen says, I have to admit, uh, Oh, move it out of way <laughs> before I get a bunch of paint on it. I'm I'm surprisingly good at not like uh, damaging my works, but you're right. I will move it to the safe shelf where it can be safe. So, so right now I'm just grabbing from over here. Where is it? Some gesso. I have texture gesso. That's not for today. We don't. We're not doing that today. Looks like I have some Grumbacher. That should be fine. But I'm gonna need a different tool to grab someone because I don't wanna I don't wanna get anything messed up. So this is just some gesso. I love this stuff because it's nice and thick. And I I guess you could say that I'm a I like to work with like the wet paint a lot, so I'm just kind of adding it. Let me grab a big splotch so that I don't get things too contaminated. There we go. So, notice I haven't even cleaned off my brush. I am I am a messy, globby painter, especially when I do this. Obviously, if I were trying harder to make a, a scenery or anything in particular, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do this. This is just because I'm being totally, totally free. And I want these colors to be just as crazy as possible. And it does end up with a little bit of a, I forget what the art movement was, like Van Gogh, who would paint and just use all these really nice, huge, gorgeous globs. Some of them are drying a little and that's good. It's gonna keep them separate from each other. So this is, these are my backgrounds. This is how I'm doing them. I try to use soft colors so they don't interfere too much with the line work. And, and you know what? It's fun. Why not? If, if I didn't have to worry about uh, being live right now, I'd probably use my fingers. Because again, just trying to be like kids. A lot of my pink got kind of disappeared, didn't it? But that's kind of cute. I'm going to add a little more gonna add a little more something a little something let's see what happens if I add a little yellow and I think that's it for the painting part but of course this is gonna be very wet and so I'm gonna have to set it aside but we can use a different one while this dries and you guys know me so I will always encourage you to just just play I feel like I used too much yellow I'm gonna pick some of it up first time I rinse my my brush here. Let me grab a tissue. My friendly tissues. At least that's the good part of working messy like this is you can kind of just remove anything that you feel got carried away. But yeah, who'd have thought? 
I know that I've, I've, I've been spending a little bit of time on threads. I don't know those of you who like to spend time on social media, but I've been on there just checking it out. And I'd hate to say there's a lot of negativity going around. So I'm not entirely sure how I will continue. So if, if you're not aware, threads is Instagram's version of Twitter. And so it's pretty much become Twitter as far as I can tell. So now it looks very yellowish. Interesting. Let's see what happens when I pick this up. So I'm just going to use some tissue and try to pick up some of what I laid down because there's too much. Better. <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of yellow at the moment. But yeah, I've been on threads and it's unfortunate. I just see people being so negative and just kind of stressing out about things I wish they didn't stress out about. So my desire is to not be around negativity, so I might have to limit my exposure there, but I like the texture of using the tissue here too, by the way, this is really cool. So you were going to ask about the drying time on this. Uh, I have a heating gun, so with the heating gun, the drying time is like 30 seconds. But if I am going to have to set this aside to dry on its own, it actually might not be too much because my whole layer of paint here is kind of thin. It's not too thick, especially after what I'm doing right now. I'm thinning down the paint and you can see it's all kind of like merging together. The colors are really soft. So uh, I think if I were to leave this alone, <clears throat> if you're doing this right now, you might need to give it like, gosh, Maybe just to be safe, 15 minutes, but it doesn't take long. At least it hasn't with me. I don't know, your weather might affect it too. Wow, I love this. <laughs> that is so cute. Impressionist. I, I finally remembered. Hello, Janaka? Hello, welcome. You've been curious about gouache. Yeah, thank you. So, so right now this isn't gouache yet. These are just acrylic paints. And I am actually going to go into the gouache real soon. So we're going to set this guy right now. Eyes purple crying. <laughs> yeah, Suzette is crying. <laughs> yeah, so let's see here. <clears throat> I'm probably going to be shifting around quite a bit just because my foot is hurting. I I sprained it. And you, you may know... <clears throat> Sprains take a while to heal. It can take more than a month sometimes, depending on the injury. So my hands are nice and messy. I love that. This is the sign of, of an art session. It's paint on the hands. I'm going to leave that there. So this guy, if I were to attack this with a heat gun, I could probably get this done. I don't want the noise right now. I don't want to deal with the noise. So I'm just going to set this aside. And I did show you guys that I have some other other color schemes. So that's the, the little impressionist kind of spring-like colors we just created. And here's like a more vibrant one that I had made. Let me move this. I'm going to have a hard time not dunking my brush into my tea. I'm going to have to drink the tea before I end up doing that. <clears throat> but here are the vibrant colors. So you can kind of see... These were the same paints though. So here I just ended up using a lot of that pink and orange, a little bit of blue. So yeah, lots, lots of, this is gonna be so sweet. So maybe in, a, in the next live, we can use this somehow, just because I kind of wanna let this dry naturally for a bit so it doesn't buckle too much. Some people get marked mugs so they don't <laughs> confuse them. You would think I wouldn't confuse it because, you know, it's obviously it's got the little Christmas tree on it. And my my uh, my water containers are all glass. They're like glass jars, but still my silly brain might might make the wrong choice. So it, I might just need to put my my tea mug kind of on the other side to the left of me. So I think what I what I will do, just because we are limited on time, <clears throat> and those of you who are playing along, again, heat gun to that, dry it off real fast. Super, super fast. And I believe if I were to use the heat gun, which I don't have it on hand right now, uh, I think that YouTube automatically lowers the sound so you guys don't get blasted with noise, but it's it's me who can't take the noise right now. I have a like a sinusitis problem 
So loud noises make my ears literally hurt right now. So I don't want to subject myself to the noise. But yeah, there you go. Like, I'll be honest, this turned out super pretty. I love the, the texture of it and just the overall. Let me try to angle that. Can you guys see the texture there? Uh, Melissa says, one of the YouTubers you watch uh, has a mug that says caution dirty <laughs> paint water that's cute and then patty said when you're in the zone anything happens oh yeah it's it's all it's all game my gosh look at this texture i'm hoping you guys can see it uh and that my camera is picking up on it it's just so lovely <laughs> yeah anything anything can happen so <clears throat> Yeah, definitely. My my ears are being little punks, and so this guy's going to dry. So what I would like us to do is, while you guys are getting kind of situated with if you're using any paints right now, so that was a nice, fun way, just kind of sort of stamping the paper with colors. And so since this guy's dry, and you can see I've already started doing some doodling here, I'll show you what I do with the actual gouache. <clears throat> so that, at the very least, we can kind of have a little art tack about the kind of paints that I use. The texture is showing up. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, it is. It's just those little things when you're making art that just make it so worth it. Little details that you as the artist, it's like your little secret almost. Uh, because sometimes the people that want the art from you, they don't know, but you know, you know, it's just perfect little things. So I've been holding up this, this little container. So as you can see, it's relatively small. This is Li Liquitex Acrylic Gouache. Uh, around here, my, my store is Michael's, and they do have these in lots of colors. Currently, I'm just limit, I've, I only have these two, so the titanium white and the Mars black. And so these are acrylic paints for sure, so they do dry just like my base colors did. They will dry up. And because it's gouache, I'm going to mix it with a little water so that it almost feels like... I am working with ink. So this, this feels familiar to me. So I'm gonna use some black here. Let me check that this is in view, okay? So it's the tiniest bit that I need. This is a very small bottle, but it is the tiniest bit. I'm, I'm only now getting acquainted with gouache paints and by now I mean this, this year. So it is a work in progress. So there's my black, not a lot. Here's my white, because I want white for my highlights. You've seen me work with, with pencils, like white charcoal. When you're working with paints, you need the same kind of things. And I think I got a little plug, so I'll need to unplug it. But uh, you all know, I, I don't paint in realism. It's none of that. I'm pretty sure that if you're learning from anyone else, they're gonna have different things to say. And I, this is really just my process. I I have a very simple method of simply putting down color and then on top of my colors right here then I work in black so that's what that will be and then I work in white let's see if this will come out now did I unplug it enough this bottle's been giving me trouble it's a little punk <clears throat> I believe I have a tool that's pointy enough to get in there I think this should get in there I'm I'm getting the feeling that this doesn't, uh, there it goes. This might not seal up all the way, which is why the paint is getting plugged. But I will also only need just a little bit. I won't need much of this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two consistencies of this. So for my first one, I've got clean water and I just use these little kind of non-syringe syringes. You can get them pretty cheap, pretty much anywhere. I, for me, it's Amazon. And so I'm going to add a couple of drops of water here. I'm not going to water this down too much. Let's just do a, just a little bit. You can use a dropper or even just your brush if you want. So I'm going to water this down only about that much. Hopefully you can see. Let's see if that works. Grab a little brush. Who's my little guy? Who's going to help me today? Okay. So this is gonna be my first consistency. This one's gonna be pretty, pretty dark. 
it feels to me like I'm working with ink when I use this and I like that that's just me it's my tendency so it's pretty watery where's my leftover piece of paper this guy's gonna get used today for some swatching some swatching okay I'm gonna turn it around I just want to see how dark this is so when you're playing around with these and you're like me and you're kind of new test it just to see how dark it is that's pretty dark I like that that's my first consistency I'm gonna leave that alone okay so I'm gonna keep that and then I can just use a little more paint or I can use the same one it's fine either way I'm gonna use another tiny dab and add more water to that one so my second consistency is going to have a lot more water in it i like to have a thin a thin version of this so this is much more watered down so that's all i'm doing i just need to make sure i keep track of which one is which this one has more volume so i'm just going to assume it's the one with more water let's see hopefully this is watered down enough that it's visibly different yep okay I like that. I want it to be like a grayish. Let me spread it out and see. Grayish instead of blackish. There's a chance I might need to add more black to this one because I'm noticing it's losing some of its oomph. So yeah, that's kind of how I do it. I play around. I'm just kind of testing stuff out. So when you're doing your own thing too, just keep, keep playing around with it like that. Just see how you can kind of change your consistencies. Okay, Barbara said, so sad seeing people being negative and rude. Yeah. Yeah, different social media sites are going to are going to have a lot of different attitudes and unfortunately the 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 Twitterverse has a lot of uh, tech bros in it and a lot of the AI quote-unquote artists are ending up on on threads as well and it's getting weird. So, I'm spending a lot of time having to block block people with negative attitudes for sure. Katya says, you use a medicine syringe. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Let me try this one again. That's pretty good. I'm going to be using a tiny brush, so basically all I want is the difference. I want dark and I want light, so I think I'm pretty good with these consistencies. Let me... I might need to switch over to some cleaner water in just a sec, because my water's all painted up over here. That's okay. I've got lots of containers. So that's that one. The white one's going to be a little harder but we can do it. I'm just going to need something else. I forgot to bring a towel. Any of you who paint probably know it's a good idea to have a towel on hand for uh, wiping off your brushes and such. Unfortunately, I don't think I bring, brought one and I'm kind of limping around, so I'm not going to go get one right now. So I think I, yes, I added water here. Here's my white. Because I use so little of the white, what I basically end up doing. So there's my nice white. Okay, so that's pretty good. What I end up doing is in the well next to it, I add some water and then I just transfer some of this over there because I, I use so little of it. These are just for my highlights. So now I have two consistencies automatically. Just a very light one and a very thick one. So I'm not going to use this brush, it's too big, at least for what I'm doing. So there are those. There they are. My swatches I think look okay for now. I'm willing to, I'm willing to go with that. I think it looks good. Okay. <clears throat> so let's, let's play around with this so you can kind of see I did my usual doodles here. And I'll show you how I did those because I'm pretty sure you're all curious about kind of some of my strange methods. Where's the space? <laughs> hope we don't get dizzy here how about here I'm happy with that I've got a space here and you'll notice too that the paint settles so whenever you're playing with it you'll want to move things around Ooh, I've got all sorts of packaging on my my desk right now nice okay uh, Dandy Grand says blunt temp syringe is underrated as an art tool yeah I think I've mentioned before that I get these guys because sometimes my cats need medicine, etc. So this is perfect for kind of getting in their little mouths and just kind of giving them their medicine. But the packages come in like packages of 50, so I, there are plenty for me to use. 
Andrew Walker, hello, hello. Hello, you're here with us. So the thing that I do here, when I start drying on there, so again, this is the paint, acrylic paint that has dried. And when that dries, I'm gonna use a tool you've seen me use a lot, is this silly pen. It isn't anything special. It doesn't do anything special. It is incredibly inexpensive. And all it is is it's a gel pen. You've seen me use it a lot if you've seen my other videos. It's a gel pen. It doesn't say that it's waterproof, but it almost behaves waterproof. So whatever pen you have that can handle wet stuff around it, use that. And I found that this gel pen, because of the ink and the fine point, does a great job of helping me create these initial lines. So let's say right here, I'm going to do a little bit of line work. This pen just lets me do all of that. So if I find, let's say, I want to have a nice little spot right here. Let me make sure the ink is flowing. And so all I'm doing is giving myself a way to lay down the initial design. It's kind of like uh, you're making something else and you use a pencil at first. That's what this is. It's like it's my pencil. Or honestly, you can just straight up use a pencil if you're comfortable with that. I just, because of my, the way my vision is. Andrew says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Lori says, you love that pen. You know what? This thing is, again, underrated. They're, I, I link them constantly in a lot of my videos. And I know a lot of you have tried them. And that's all it is. It's just gel. It's a gel pen. And so I'm just going to make a few little designs here. So here I am, I'm adding some uh, some contour lines, so they're nice and curvy. And I'm just going around, doing my usual thing, you know me. Doing little doodles, little shapes. And then once I get my doodles and shapes in place, and one thing that I'm noticing is it's just so nice. when you have When you have that pen that works for you, it could be a fancy one, it could be a cheap one, whatever it is for you. When you have that thing that works for you, it's doesn't it make everything just so much better? It doesn't matter what's going on, you're just you're just in it for that pen. <laughs> so right now, this gouache is also really good. I love using it a lot. So this pen is helping me lay down my lines where I want them. And I feel like someday I won't need the pen. I think for me right now this pen is a crutch. And it's okay. It gets me where I need to get. So you ordered them. Nice. Carrie said you ordered them. And Trish says <laughs> the pen is fantastic. And isn't it nice when they're cheap? So good. I know that some people have mentioned how uh, they're concerned for, you know, waste. But we do what we can. When I can, I will try to find a product that I can reuse so I don't have to throw away the barrels, you know, these things. But for now, this is how things are. I don't have the money. I've been looking for some pens that are refillable, and oh my gosh, they're expensive. They're beautiful, and presumably they're pretty good, but they're expensive. Don't have that kind of money yet. Oh, my little kidder is over there meowing up a storm somewhere. So here we go. There it is. I just kind of laid down the shape, and that's what you're seeing all throughout here. These are just the shapes I went in with my pen. I had fun. If you're making art, that's, I say it to myself a lot. Like, if you're not having fun, then why are you doing this, you know? So for me, this is the point is I'm here to enjoy it. So enjoy it. So that's what we're doing here. And I'm kind of just sharing with you some of the strange, silly things I do while I'm enjoying the art. So I'm just adding a few more little doodles. <clears throat> my usual stuff. I try to change the sizes so that as I head out towards the edge of the space, it uh, they get a little smaller. And I don't need to go to the edge because I'm painting right now. So in the edge there, I'm going to add black paint or gray paint. You'll see what I do in a bit. Little doodly swirly shapes there. I'm good with that. Let's play around with the paint a little bit. I'm going to grab some of these itty bitty brushes. I'll show you how tiny they are. I'll I'll make sure again to to link these. These are all things I've gotten on on Amazon. 
So I believe these are three different types of brushes. And they, they come tiny, but not this tiny. I ended up going in and snipping them so that they're even smaller just because I, I want the tiniest lines possible. So this guy gets pretty good too. They're all very tiny. So it's just a quick look at the different sizes so that we can kind of start playing around. I think this one I leave for the white because it's white. So I'm going to set this over here. And then these guys I use for the black line work. So it's going to be very similar to what we were doing with the pen, except I'm going to start going in with the black and just kind of checking my hand for steadiness because I know this is hard. It's hard to have a steady hand, isn't it? But you got to practice if you want to have a steadier hand. Just a little bit every day. Whatever it is that your goals are for this kind of stuff. <laughs> You've convinced me I'm going to order the pens. Yes, Katya, give it a go. There, I think the package of 30 pens is $6.99. And um, you can find the link in a lot of my other videos, but today after we're done here, I will make sure to link it in this one so that everything is linked, like the brushes, the pens, the markers, anything that we use. Yeah, Maggie said... <laughs> Look at dip pens and still fillable pens. Oh yeah, Trish, you're absolutely right. I use dip pens, which is kind of why I'm going right now with brushes. Because for me, it's very similar to dip pens. Yeah, you're right. Dip pens are inexpensive. And you can use any ink you want and just kind of play around. So this is definitely a different skill when you're using brushes and dip pens. A lot of what happens here happens with you tilting. So you want to hold this tilted and just do your best to kind of only let that that little tip at the end touch your paper. It, there's a learning curve here, definitely. I did practice on a few other papers before I was brave enough to do it here. And even now, I'm still just, I keep playing around because I'm trying to learn learn lots of good stuff. So here you can see I'm just kind of going over the edges. This is where I want it to be the blackest, is around those edges. And I'll probably go in here a little bit too. Many, many years ago I did do painting and I did use acrylics. So some of this is a little familiar. But the consistency of this with a lot of water in it like this is very different. So it, it does take some some getting used to. I, I always marvel at like watercolor artists and gouache artists who can get so much, so much done. And to me, it's crazy using such a wet medium. But everyone's got a different skill, so that's always nice. All right. Katia says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. When, when you're, when you're unsure, try it anyway. You're just playing, remember? We're just playing. And so right here, and then depending on how much time I have or how willing I am, I'll come through and I do all the other lines. Just really carefully. I'm practicing. I'm playing. If I quote unquote mess this up, it's okay. I'm going to keep playing with it. You know, if I get a little glob, if I if I drop a bunch of ink somewhere weird, that's fine. I'm calling it ink again. It's not ink. <laughs> this is gouache paint. And like I said, the cool thing is this is going to dry up nice and solid. And whenever I do some layering on top, it won't interfere. And I love that. For me, of course. If you're doing different kinds of painting, you might want different kind of paints. So you'll notice that I'm kind of just doing the little edges here of these lines. I'm not going all the way inside. It's just part of my idea when I'm thinking of how I want, how I want it to be dark and light in different places. I am going to come in here with some of that white that we mixed up too. So that'll be nice. This takes a lot of practice. This is not easy. So if you, if you're brave enough to try this too, Practice, practice, practice. 
And I know I'm not super zoomed in right now. I'm going to zoom in just a little more. I just wanted to give you all kind of a, a perspective of just how tiny this stuff is. I don't know if I mentioned it, but over the holidays, I got some canvases. So I do actually have some plans to start trying to go back to canvas work for a few things. That'll be interesting. Gotta be brave. I think 2024 for me is going to be the year of being brave, of actually kind of going outside of my comfort zone right now. Okay, this isn't too bad. I'm not messing it up too bad. But if I do, it's okay. Just learning to use that teeny tiny brush. I mean, you guys are seeing it. It's like the littlest thing in the world. Have you tried nail art brushes? They're really skinny. Oh yeah, Maggie. I have. I'm I'm almost tempted to say that the one I'm holding right now is like one of those. Um, but I did actually buy a a set that was for nail art and I didn't really like it. I wonder if maybe I just got something that was too cheap or just you know how how sellers are. They they'll say that it's wonderful, but when you actually go to use it, it's not the best. So there's a chance I might just try something different. I'll keep trying stuff out. But I have tried the nail art brushes. They were actually like a little too thin. They were too flimsy. And they were all bent when they got here and I had a, you kind of have to like steam them or boil them to get them to straighten out. But yeah, it's a good idea. I might just need to look for like a better brand. That's all. But I'll get there. Sharpie on canvas. Oh, yeah. I am i don't always have good luck with Sharpies on canvas just because I think um, I think that the ink, the alcohol ink, doesn't always do what I need it to do. So, but I, I might try that again. That's a good suggestion. I should try that. You've all seen me try the Posca pens as well, and I didn't like those a, a whole lot. They were okay, and I'm trying to use them when I can. Occasionally, I'll bring out the Posca pens and use them here as well, but I wasn't a huge fan. Not a huge fan, and that's okay. Not everything is for everybody. So as you can see, when I feel brave, I'll come over here and I'll do just a little bit of line work without any pen underneath. And it's just me, like, slowly kind of... Just slowly dipping my my toe uh, dipping my brush I guess just trying out something different just just trying a little just trying to see if maybe this is something I'd like to do and so I'm just doing a few lines it's scary and it's okay and so those are just gonna dry up and then I'll see how those look when I'm done because maybe I did okay and then, of course, occasionally practice doing other shapes, like some kind of circles. So I'm, I'm really just doing something that's familiar. I'm used to drawing. I'm used to doodling. This whole page is just an experiment. It's just a way to play around and just see what I can accomplish. So yeah, that's gouache there for you. Isn't it wonderful? If you've tried it before, you already knew all this. You were, you were like, Betsy, I already know. But maybe you didn't. So here you can kind of see what's going on with my um, <clears throat> my mixture that's a little more watered down. This one here. It's settled. And really I just make sure, see the top is just kind of water. And so I just come in here and I just mix it up. For this one I might use a brush that's just a little, just slightly wider. Maybe this one here. It's got a little more width to it. Because what I'm essentially doing here is what you if if you've seen my other work, I I tend to use an ink wash, so it's very watered down. So this turns out kind of light gray. I'm gonna use this to make shadows. I don't think I have any shadows on this page at all, so let's make a bunch of them. So this is my watered down ink or watered down gouache. Let's see how this looks. I'm gonna pick a spot like right here make a bit of a shadow it's scary because you're thinking oh my gosh so dark so dark so dark it's okay i'm playing around i'm making a shadow 
If I need to, I can add a little more water, but for now I'm just seeing how dark it turned out and if I like it. So there I did a little test run right there. Let me try a little bit on these edges here. And if I realize that I think it's too dark or too light, I'll adjust it. It's absolutely fine. So there I made a few little shadows. I think it turned out okay. I think I like those. <clears throat> so shadows, shadows right there. I can add some over here. Again, I'm gauging. I'm just seeing. I feel like sometimes a lot of us want to see things that are already figured out. And right now I'm offering you the experience of actually kind of finding out for yourself. Mess around, find out. See how far you're willing to go with your work. So here again, I'm just adding some more of this watered down stuff, adding shadows, just practicing. <clears throat> I think I like this consistency. It turned out okay. I'm going to use this spot over here. Let me take a second to show you how this guy's doing. It's still a little damp. I think the paint is dry. The paint itself is dry, but the paper feels feels cool to the cool to the touch. So it means there's still a little bit of dampness in there, but it's nice. I think it turned out pretty good. Maybe I can use this tomorrow or for a for a video sometime soon. <clears throat> but it's looking pretty good. I think I need to finish off this tea for a second. Okay, so I'm hoping that you guys are kind of having some fun and playing around with your paints. Uh, whatever types of paints that you guys have, that should be nice. Very nice. Looks like there are 45 uh, joining me today. Very nice. Thank you for being here. If you're here, I hope you're enjoying this. You're learning something new. You're playing around with your pens, with your paints, with your markers. Let's make sure that this year is a year to play around. It's a year to just enjoy what you do with Wild Abandon. If you're on social media, don't worry what people say. Don't worry if you're getting likes. And if you're not on social media, make sure you're making time for yourself. Don't work so hard. My goodness. I'm sure some of you were working like all day and all night long. Make time for yourself. You need it. So you can see here my little shadows. I think they're coming out just fine. They might even turn out a little softer once once they dry. And we'll, we're just going to test this out. So this is my lighter concoction here. Shadow, shadow, shadow. I'm going around the edges. Just playing around. I wish I could tell you guys that this is like me. I have practiced a little, but seriously, like I, I just mess around. If you ever see something that I do and you like it, just know that I just figured it out too. I'm, even experts aren't experts. We're all just playing. I like it so far. It's giving it a lot more depth, so that's really nice. Lots of little shadows. I think I'm gonna do this spot right here. Little shadow, shadow spots. <laughs> Melissa, you're doodling in your journal. Very nice. Uh, let's see. I think I missed a couple of comments. Hello from Carrie. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, Carrie is curious how the rug art is going. Oh, yeah. I'm I got most of the way through the process with them. I'm I'm having a bit of a um what would I call it? I'm having a personal dilemma. So, this company is everything seems fine but i was looking through their contract and i find it odd that in the contract it says that they will only make my design available for 15 days is what they claim can if you can believe that it's not going to be up too long only 15 days and i will not earn my part of the commission like my portion of the money if i don't uh, post it on my social media a total of three times in those 15 days. 
If they make a sale of my design on a rug that did not go through my link, but through their own website sales, I do not get paid at all. And I'm, I'm having a dilemma of actually signing that contract. Maybe I'm being too uh, something, I don't know. But I, I'm having a hard time like coming to terms with that, that they could make a sale of my art and I won't get paid because it's in the contract. I don't know what to do about that. I want to sign it, but I, I don't feel like it's right. So I'm not sure. I mean, what do you guys think? Doesn't it feel kind of predatory? It feels abusive. It really does. 15 days. And then I have to get on my social media. So they're basically expecting that my followers will buy it. And it's like, okay, I get it. But it just seems kind of predatory. Yeah, Katya says, not a good deal. Alan say, says it's fishy. Yeah, see? So you guys are kind of getting it. I'm, I, was, I was hoping it wasn't just me. It's just it fe feels... Ugh. Just something about it feels... Ugh. And I might do it just for the sake of, like, seeing my art end up on a rug. But also, like, is it worth it? Maybe I could try it once. Uh, I don't know. I'd hate to have to support a company that's acting that way. So that's where I'm at with that. They've been emailing me. They're like, hey, are you going to sign the contract or what, girl? And I'm like, uh, maybe. I'm giving them the cold shoulder for now just because I'm I'm trying to decide. I'm trying to decide on that. Yeah. Exactly. It's my work and there's a chance that I could get nothing simply because they made the sale through their website. That was fishy. And I'm I want to believe that I'm intelligent enough that to have understood the contract properly because I did read through it. My I've never really mentioned this, but I, I, uh, my, I guess you could call it like a minor. The other stuff that I studied while I was at school was business, business administration. So I'm not, you know, I read it. I read it right. I wonder if I can probably tell them that I don't like that stipulation in the contract and that I want them to change it. And they can probably say no, but at least I'll let them know that I think that it's predatory and that, that if they don't change that, that clause, then I won't sign it. So it's kind of like my last, my last idea that I've got. Because I'm not going to sign it with the way it is right now. That's wrong. Yeah, your gut is telling you it isn't right. Yeah, for sure. Going with my instinct. And I don't want to support them because they're just going to keep doing that. And they just feel like they can probably make money off of dumb artists. Dumb, dumb artists. So... Yeah, that might be part of my new 2024 persona will be kind of fighting more for people's rights that way because it's just, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. So I'm, I'm still adding more shadows. I'm liking it so far. I'm enjoying this. I'm going to play around a little more. Just going to keep adding this watered down gouache. But yeah, thank you for asking me, you guys, about that whole rug thing going on. It has been on the back burner because of... Uh, concerns I wish it would just go smoothly but sometimes things aren't aren't the way we want them to be kind of just have to deal with it yeah Wolf Nelson joined a local artist guild best thing you've done in a long time that's interesting how do you locate an artist guild is it is it actually local like did you go there personally did you find them online? I feel like there are some art communities here locally for me as well that I should probably get connected to. When I was going to community college um, some years back, kind of getting my, my undergrad stuff done, I, I did take some art classes like ceramics and I ended up in an art show and uh, I got connected with a lot of people. So I've been, I've been thinking recently of reaching out to them like the curator for the college, for the, the college's art program, she still contacts me sometimes. And I'm thinking again, I need to start being brave and reaching out to my art contacts again. I need a different brush. I would like a different brush. How about this guy? This guy over here. 
think I might like this one. It's a little bit bigger. Yeah, Andrew says get them to change it. Yeah, for sure. So you go to a local art center. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, on on my list for sure, I'm going to start reaching out to people that I know. Especially, like I said, the, the curator of that, that art center at my college. I ended up going to a bunch of events with her after the art show, and, and it was just really nice. So it's kind of silly of me to not have kept up with that. It just, all of that was right around COVID, so it was really hard to get a hold of people and to actually physically go to things with people. I would like to do that again. Wouldn't that be fun? So you guys can see. Let me zoom out a little bit. I just want you to see the, the how things change. So, so much more depth already. We have line work done in this darker gouache. And now I added shadows with this more watered down version of it. So here it is. It's got a lot more water in it. So yeah, if you have a little tray like this, play around with something like that. Look at all that depth that we just made. So good. Okay. So we're going to be switching that up in just a second. Yeah. Alan says local art groups are great. Nice. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll, I will look into that. So I'm trying to remember how I organized these. I think I did it this way. So this one is more solid. This one was more watered down. So I would like to do a few little test runs with my white. What I'm essentially accomplishing with this white is to create little highlights. And you guys know I love me some highlights. It's going to help it really pop. So I'm going to stick to this zone that I was already adding shadows in. So let's get in here just a little closer. I think that's pretty good right here. And I'm going to use my white that's that's pretty watered down. So how about I put it here a little bit out of the way, make sure it's not taking up over everything. So this is my more watered down one. It's not my solid. I, I'm using this one just to be safe because I'm afraid that I, you know, I might hit it too hard. So let's see how this looks. This is my watered down white. Let's add some soft highlights just to see, just to see how it goes. This is going to look a lot more opaque when you first put it down. Very opaque, but it'll soften up. Don't be afraid. Do not fear your paints. And if it ends up super white, it's okay. You learned something. This is why I'm using gouache. It's, you can lay down really soft layers and, you know, just kind of, we're just gonna play a little. So I'm just laying down some of this. There's a chance this might interact with the ink that's below and I'll just keep that in mind. It might do that and I'll just kind of take it as a, just a fact, just a fact of things. And then maybe I'll just learn to use a different pen underneath when I'm kind of doodling around. But for now, generally, I've noticed that it doesn't mess around with too much. Not too much. So you can see I'm just adding whites. You can just do like nice clean lines if you want. It's up to you what style you want. You can kind of spread it out. It's okay if you get messy because then you can always come back with uh, the other paint and kind of cover over it. You can always, in a sense, fix it. You can see this doesn't look too delicate. This doesn't, oh, look at that, I made a mess. This is very experimental. If you ever do what I did, I'll show you what I try to do if I kind of drop a little bit of a mess there. Got a little carried away. A little Q-tip can help. And again, because these are acrylics, you can kind of thin them down a little bit. And anywhere where I made too big of a mess, I'm just going to go over it again with the, the black to fix it. I hate using the word fix, by the way. It just seems like I don't really need to fix anything. I'm just kind of like tweaking it. There we go. I'll try to be a little more delicate over here. Be a dainty, dainty person. There we go. So it looks very, very opaque at first. You can see it and notice these as they're drying much, much softer. So that's something that you can just learn to rely on when it comes to these. They're very watered down, so they do change a lot as they dry, but you're going to watch them dry very quickly. So yeah, that is our experimentation today, is just becoming acquainted with how these behave. 
this one is almost entirely gone, which is why I have two, two uh, consistencies of this here. Okay, let's see. It looks like we've been here about an hour. Wow. It's been a while, huh? If you need to get up and stretch your legs, go for it. You can see I kind of made a mess right here where it interacted with some of the ink. So that's, I'm going to take the hit on that one. That was a kind of a boo-boo. Let's see if I can get it. I flipped this around. Let's see if I can get the more, uh, I guess we could call it the stronger consistency. The, the one that's more white. See if we can get anything to happen here properly. If I just use that stronger one. What I will say is that these over here, these lines were also with the same pen. So it may simply be that I needed the lines to dry longer so that the ink really like soaks into the paper and then and then nothing will interact with it. So that may have been part of the problem. Maybe my my consistency was too wet. Any any of those things could have affected it. So yeah. So now I'm going to put a really serious white line here and let's see what happens. And these have softened up pretty nicely. So I like that. I'm going to keep using this kind of denser consistency. I'm going to add a few little bits here. Oh, that's pretty intense. It's okay. I'll go with it. See if I can add some more, a little more depth to this, this insanity here. Just there. That's fine. So you can see I'm not covering as much space with this thicker one. I'm just kind of going over little teeny tiny spots. Essentially, I'm trying to make it look like it's shiny. Like it's shiny, shiny. So I'm only doing the little tips of things, just little tiny spots. I never thought I would be here at my desk using itty bitty, itty, itty bitty little brushes. Gosh, these are so tiny. My goodness, I'm insane. Who gave me permission to do this? <laughs> it's good though, isn't it? Just try something that you've never tried before. Just do it. You never know. You might like it. I remember always thinking, like, how in the world are there some artists out there painting, you know, these itty bitty canvases, like those three inch or four inch canvases? And I was thought, how insane is that? And then look at me. That's what I get. So I'm just adding these little shiny spots. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I'm only going to do it to the ones that are right here in the middle of the bulge. That's it. See what a difference that makes. Yeah, time does fly when you're having fun. It does. <laughs> so already we can see it's starting to make a difference. It's adding so much depth and maybe this won't be your, your final iteration of you painting, but it's a start. It's a start because I feel like with a lot of people who paint, I think that there's this fear of kind of adding that depth and dimensionality to their work. And for me, that's always been the goal is to not be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of those shadows. And, and you know, that applies in life. Oh, my dog is over here whining. Sam, come here, baby girl. I think she might be hungry, but she's waiting for someone to feed her. Poor baby. She's looking at me like, you ate, so you're fine. So here I tried something different. I just kind of threw down a glob of some of the lighter consistency with some darker, with some of the thicker on top. I want to see what happens. It may not turn out pretty, and that's okay. I'm just testing things out. Anything that comes to mind, if you, you know, if it comes to mind, then give it a, give it a go. And just find a little spot just to play around with. So you can see that's what we've got right now. Such a tiny little space, just a few inches worth, and it took us an hour. Those are the kind of things we can accomplish, and it happens just a little bit at a time. We're just going to play with little things, just a little bit. You saw we didn't use too much paint. This is all we used. And about a, not even a syringe's worth of water. So if you're worried about the expenses, it's not that bad. I think I forgot to tell you how much these cost. These are about 9 or $10, I think. These are about nine or ten dollars. 
<laughs> got to get sleep. Yeah, of course, we're going to be logging off soon anyway. Thank you for joining me, Carrie. And any of you who are here, I'm kind of just going to start closing this off a little bit. Uh, I will make sure I'll, I'll look at everything that I have and I'll link it all. Hopefully you guys had a little bit of fun doodling, drawing or painting a little bit if you if you decided to do that with me today. So this was a whole lot of fun for me. I'm going to move this around just so that I can say goodbye to you guys because I think it's it's actually one of my goals recently is to start like learning to just say goodbye in person instead of just kind of waving everything away. So I think this was a pretty good exercise. <clears throat> and let me just turn this around real quick. There we go. Just so that I can say goodbye to you guys. I know it's a little bit late for some of you, but I'm really glad that you came by and you joined me. It was really nice. Very nice. So I'm just kind of looking at the comments real quick. Let's see. Yes, hello. So that was Carrie. He's going to go get some sleep. Spending time. Yes. Peace. Oh, Susan, thank you. You're so sweet. I'm pretty sure we everybody's always like self-conscious about like showing themselves. I don't wear makeup. I can't wear makeup. It makes my face itch. So I'm always self-conscious about like, I'm like a no makeup person and I'm just like gonna put my face on camera. So thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. I'm glad that you were here with me. I'm just looking at the at the comments real quick here. Yeah, thank you so much. Maybe you're gonna get some good sleep because you heard me talk. Maybe you had some fun and I hope. <laughs> thank you so much. I I really do hope to to have a year with you guys, even if it's just the same people here. If if this channel stays the same, if it grows, whatever happens, this is a journey of growth. This is a journey of learning, of maybe becoming a little more enlightened in your own practices and just kind of getting familiar with the goodies you've got. I know you've got goodies. You've got pens, you've got markers, you've got paints. Use them. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm getting lots of hugs from you guys. Hugs and waves and kisses. Very wonderful. Very nice. James, you just started watching. Thank you. Yeah, so the very last thing that I'll mention is that as far as lives, I believe that for this year, I don't want to do them every single week. That, that gets a little overwhelming for me. But I do feel good about every other week. I will make sure in the community post to let you guys know a very solid schedule about when we're going to do this. So think every 14 days. We'll do this, we'll paint, we'll doodle, we'll have fun, and we'll just kind of get some things out there in the open and we'll chat and do things like that. And then the rest of the time you just see me posting videos, processes, and tutorials and things like that. So I think that that's, that's how we're going to do this. I'm looking forward to it. I've got a lot of things to share with you guys, a lot of fun stuff that we're going to be doing. So thank you all for joining me today. Yeah, Dandy said it weekly is a lot. It is. It Sometimes just time just goes so fast and before you know it, it's Wednesday again and it's like, ooh. I didn't prepare. So yeah, I'm glad that you guys understand and thank you all for kind of keeping an eye on everything and kind of helping me stay upbeat even when I was sick and injured and just things were weird during the holidays for me. So that's why things were slow. But we got a lot of fun stuff to do. So bye you guys. I'm glad that you were here. Have a good night. Have a good morning. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>